All right, good afternoon. We're on the record in the 53rd Circuit Court for the County of Sheboygan. We have an arraignment on a warrant and file 21-6110FH, People of the State of Michigan versus Amanda Lee Heights. Counsel, you want to state your appearance for the record? Melissa Goodrich, prosecuting attorney. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. James Gilbert acting as the arraignment attorney today um, for Amanda. Okay, and we have Ms. Heights present with us here in the courtroom. We are providing enhanced public access online. And uh, Ms. Heights, it's a, you want to stand up? It's uh, alleged that you're in violation of the terms and conditions of your probation uh, by in two respects. In count one, it's alleged that on or about July 6th, you operate a operated a motor vehicle without a valid driver's license. And that's a violation of state law, which uh, is part of your probation you're not allowed to do. And in count two, that on July 7th, yesterday, you failed to appear for recovery court, and that's a violation of condition three of the terms of probation failing to report. You have the right to have a hearing on those allegations at which it would need to be proven by a preponderance of the evidence that you are in violation of your probation for those reasons. And you have the right to the assistance of an attorney. We have Mr. Gilbert here with you today for purposes of arraignment. Uh, if you wanted a hearing, we would appoint an attorney for you for that hearing. And uh, you're on probation to this court for charges of possession with intent to deliver methamphetamine as a habitual offender fourth. With that habitual offender, that's punishable by up to life in prison, as well as three other felonies which uh, carry lesser penalties. And if you are found to be in violation of your probation uh, or admit to the same, the court could revoke your probation and sentence you on the underlying offense to that maximum term of life in prison. Do you understand the rights that you would have and the penalties that you could face? Yes. All right, and Mr. Gilbert, did you have a chance to review the matter with Ms. Hypes? Yes, Ms. Hypes and I did discuss the matter. Uh, she wishes to admit to the two violations. All right, Ms. Hypes, you wanna raise your right hand as best you can. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, you can put your hand down. Would you please state your name for the record? Ms. Hypes. All right, you understand the penalties and the rights that I just indicated for you? Yes. All right. And has anybody promised you anything in order to uh, get you to plead guilty? No. Has anybody threatened you in any way? No. Is it your own free choice to plead guilty? Yes. How do you wish to plead to the allegation that you're in violation of your probation? Guilty. So you're on probation to this court for uh, possession with intent to deliver methamphetamine from the Yes. As part of your probation, are you to comply with the terms and conditions of the recovery court program? Yes, ma'am. Are you to report as ordered? Yes. And are you to not violate any laws of the state of Michigan? Yes. On July 6th, did you drive a motor vehicle? I did. Here to the courthouse? Yes. All right. And you knew that was a violation of state law? Yes. And on yesterday, July 7th, did you fail to appear for recovery court? Yes. And you knew that you had to be at court? Mm -hmm. All right. You have to say yes, yes. or no? All right. Mr. Gilbert, are you satisfied with the factual basis? I am, thank you. Ms. Goodrich? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and any objection to proceeding to immediate sentencing, Mr. Gilbert? No, Your Honor. Ms. Goodrich? No objection. All right, so uh, Mr. Gilbert, is there anything you'd like to say on behalf of Ms. Hypes? Yeah, when talking with Ms. Hypes, I think she'll probably outline it for you. Uh, she's concerned about and any term of incarceration due to the fact that she is gainfully employed at, um, on the dam site and she fears for a loss of that job. She does have uh, counseling set up. I mean, at least she's starting her MRT, uh, MRT on Monday. Uh, and uh, she has she does have her counseling that she's preparing for. So she's asking the court to consider possibly no jail or a uh, small amount. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Ms. Hypes, it's not required that you would make a statement, but it is allowed. Is there anything you want to tell me? Yes, uh, about the same as he did. I'm where I'll lose my job if I'm in here too long. If, and then I used to have counseling starting on Monday and I get my kids every Saturday. So I would lose all of that if I was in jail during those things. How much of that do you think you would lose if you went to prison for years? All of it. Okay. Ms. Goodrich, anything from the people? Uh, Your Honor, the people are concerned that uh, Ms. Hypes was warned about uh, driving without a license and then does something so bold as to drive to the county building uh, without a license. And also, she's previously been late for court and then has time to didn't even appear for court. That's been an ongoing problem uh, with her. So I'd ask the court to take those two things into consideration. All right, thank you. Well, Ms. Hypes, I'm real worried about you. Um, you know, when you when you come for recovery court, 
review hearings, your, your attitude is real good. And you're always, you know, you tell me, you know, perhaps what you think I want to hear when you're standing at that podium and you're always agreeing with the things that we're telling you, but yet, you know, you, you really are not, you're not off to a good start. Okay. Um, you're driving all over the place um, without even being taking much care about that. Um, just really flaunting that, even though you know that you're not supposed to. I know that you feel like, you know, that's the only choice that you have. There are other choices. We'll work with you on that and you got to solve those things. Um, you've been getting yourself all the way over to Charlevoix County to drug test. I have no idea why. And that's going to well, stop. That's what was made it easy for me to get yeah. a ride there and not have to drive. Well, that's going to stop. I know. Okay. Um, you know, I just think you don't quite understand here that this program is not for you to decide how you do it. This is an alternative to you spending lots of time behind bars. All right. So anything that we ask you to do or anything that you don't like of what we're asking you to do, that's just too bad because the other option is for you to go to prison. All right. So you need to take this program seriously. We will work with you and perhaps, you know, in the, in the review sessions, they're a lot less formal and we try to, you know, get involved in your life and encourage you. And I'll continue to do that. I don't want you to ever mistake my kindness for weakness. Okay. This program is going to be tough and I'm not sure that you're committed to succeeding in it. I'd like to see you succeed in it and you certainly can, but you cannot do it in the way that you have been. What you're doing now is not a recipe for success. All right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue you on probation. I'm going to continue you in the recovery court program. I'm going to amend your term of probation to order that you serve 13 days in the Sheboygan County Jail. You may be released on Monday, July 19th at 8 a.m. All right, that'll be the order of the court. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, if I may approach, I do, yes. I do have a assigned probation violation. Our brain must have some rights. Okay, thank you. All right, good afternoon. We are shifting gears. We just finished a case in Sheboygan County, and that quickly I was able to travel to Pressfield County by virtue of Zoom. And uh, we're on the record now in the 53rd Circuit Court for the County of Presqu'ile. Here we have a probation violation case or hearing in the case of people of the state of Michigan versus Devin Robert Blair. It's file 17-93010FH. Counsel, you want to state your appearance for the record? Uh, your I Honor, Mike Vogler. Go, go ahead, Mr. Vogler. Uh, Mike Vogler, I'm here for Devin uh, Blair. Kenneth Arantz, I'm on behalf of the people. All right, and uh, Mr. Vogler, this is the time and date set for a probation violation hearing. Do you know how Mr. Blair wishes to proceed? Uh, your Honor, I think he's going to admit to the violation. Okay, Mr. Blair, uh, you want to raise your right hand as best you can? Okay, do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, you put your hand down. And are you Devin Robert Blair? Yes, sir. All right, are you on probation to this court for a charge of possession of controlled substances? Uh, yes, sir. All right, it's alleged that you're in violation of your probation uh, by failing to report to your agent back in April of 2018, failing to comply with substance abuse testing at the same time, and failing to comply with the terms and conditions of the SWIFT and SURE program back again in April of 2018. You would have the right to have a hearing on those allegations at which it would need to be proven by a preponderance of the evidence that you are in violation of your probation for those reasons. And you'd have the right to the assistance of an attorney, and we have Mr. Vogler here for you for that purpose. If you are found to be in violation of your probation, 
or you admit to the same, I could revoke your probation and sentence you on the underlying charge of possession of controlled substances, and that is a felony punishable by a maximum of up to two years in prison. Do you understand the rights you would have and the maximum penalty that you could face? I do, Your Honor. All right. Has anybody promised you anything in order to get you to plead guilty? Uh, no, sir. Has anybody threatened you in any way? No, sir. Is it your own free choice to plead guilty? Yes, it is. Knowing all this, how do you wish to plead to the charge of violating your probation? I'm guilty, Your Honor. All right. And uh, were you in the Swift and Sure Sanctions probation program back in April of 2018? Yes, I was. Okay. And did you fail to submit to drug testing and report to the agent as directed? Yes, sir. Okay. You basically removed yourself from that program then? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Uh, Mr. Volger, are you satisfied with the factual basis? Uh, I am. <clears throat> Mr. Radzvon? I am, Judge. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Volger, I suppose we should schedule this for sentencing then, so Mr. Bloomley can prepare some recommendations. Uh, we could schedule this for the July 19th date. Double check what slots are still open. Okay, we can add this for uh, probation violation sentencing on July 19th at 9 10 a.m. And I know that's uh, pretty soon, but I think I don't want to have Mr. Blair sit too long. Um, the underlying charge doesn't carry a uh, super high maximum, so I want to decide on his sentence uh, sooner rather than later. Thank you, uh, Your anything Honor. Further, Mr. Anything further, Mr. Vogler? Uh, no. Mr. Rathbun? Uh, no, Judge. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Blair, we'll see you a uh, week from Monday on July 19th for your sentencing, okay? All right. Thank you. Okay. We'll be in recess.